give my life color. You give my life color, color, color. You give my life color. guys welcome back and it's Sunday yay it's prize day okay we have some confessions to make beforehand well okay you were never gonna see this so this is the bird that I have been working on and unfortunately oops I accidentally deleted the video I thought I downloaded it I we're getting new phones this week and I was trying to clean up my phone so that they can transfer the data from my phone to the new phone. And I figured, oh, I'm going to start the new phone out nice and clean. So I didn't want them transferring everything I didn't need. And I started cleaning up the pictures and I thought I downloaded it into my computer. And unfortunately, I permanently erased it from my phone and I didn't download it. So... The only thing I have is the actual picture. But the tutorial was only going to go up to the bird. It was not going to include the background, mostly because I'm playing with the background and I just wanted to do it for myself. Nobody else. I just wanted to. It was one of those things that you, I have to practice. And I haven't used my pastels in forever. So I started working on a pastel blurry background. Well, I didn't like it. So you, when I had originally done this, I was like, well, okay, I'm going to just put it in the closet and never look at it again. But since I lost the film of me doing the bird, I had to show you something because I didn't want to just end it with a half done bird. So this is the bird and the background I am now revisiting and I'm kind of feeling it now. Unfortunately, I had taken the tape off of it and I was just putting it away. I was never going to look at it again. And now I like it. So I am going to finish it, but I haven't done it yet. I really like the background the way it is. I'm working on some more of the details on the bird. Um, I have my Colleen's out on my desk from another video that I was working on. So I'm just picking up the Colleen's to play with. Damn, these pencils are good pencils. They do not get enough credit. They are good pencils. I would, I just really need to use these a little bit more often. They are so pretty. So... This is all you get, and I can't do the tutorial for it over again. It was pretty much more of the same. Um, when you're doing the long feathers, you just do the long feathers. Um, the whole thing is in your sketch. If your sketch is good, your animal will come out good, or your picture will come out good. So I like the sketch on here a lot. It's actually a very simple sketch and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of uploading it um, if anybody wants to do the bird. And the more you play with the details, the more it comes alive. Now, at this point, I could be using any pencil, and I know I used Starjoy on the bottom, but I don't have my Starjoys out. It's as simple as that. So, sorry about that. It happens. This week, I want to spotlight Deb O'Haver, and she did a fabulous picture. So, let me give you a little bit of history, and we'll go on from there. Uh, this picture was colored by Deb O'Haver, obviously, 
and it's a Lynn Thomas Creative Studio Design, and you can Google for her pictures. And this is act. This is a picture of the Adoration of Shepherds from 1692, and it was originally painted from what I saw and was able to look at by Gerald Van Honthorst, but I think the picture itself is an adaptation from one that went back even earlier in time. I'm not not 100% sure. I didn't spend that much time uh, looking up the picture. So it's definitely an adaptation of this picture. Deb asked if I would critique it, and I definitely will. And even before I saw the original picture, I immediately saw some of the things that she could change on here to make it a little bit less harsh. Now, I want to spend a lot of time on what I fell in love with this picture for. First of all, her use of lighting is fantastic. She was talking to me about the black background. She used a gray, a black, and a indigo blue which was the absolute perfect choice. Indigo blue mixed with black or indigo blue mixed with gray gives a very soft black background. And I think she, I don't think you can get it any more perfect than the way she did it. It looks very shadowed. It's not harsh. It's not flat. Black alone will give you a very flat background. The fact that she mixed in the gray and the blue brought it from a flat background to a three-dimensional. Now, if you look at the shadows on the faces, I think she did a fabulous job capturing where the lights were. I love the way it shines on the faces and then immediately cuts into the shadowed area. A lot of people are afraid to do that. They don't trust what they see. They trust what their mind sees. So to do a, an abrupt color change like that is kind of scary and... But when you do it and it works like this one works, it's great. The only criticism I have on this is the brightness that she did on the baby Jesus. Now, if you look at the original picture, you will see the whole bottom where she has the bottom is lit up. I don't think she put that bottom of the uh, manger into enough shadow. If she dulled that down a little, darkened it up, the light will focus mainly upward. In her picture, she's got a lot of downward light, and that's why it's looking very um, ghostly. All this involves is a little bit of dark. Add in, tone it down. Put more of that bottom into the shadows the blanket on the bottom more into the shadow. It really would not be lit up as much if you want the light to go absolutely up. Now, if you see on the man who is kneeling, praying, there is a very light area where the light is coming in. I think that's perfect. And if she follows that line down, everything underneath that is in shadow where she then lit up everything a couple of inches over when she went into the straw. So if she just darkens up the straw and darkens up that bottom and makes a slight distinction between the baby Jesus and the blanket. And you can see in the original picture what I'm talking about when it comes to that distinction. Darken up in the areas. Remember, everything has a shadow even things that are in the light. And even though this is uplit, there's going to be a terminal shadow or the uh, the area that is absolutely in darkness because two objects are coming together. And I think that's where she's missing it. Um, I would give her another 15 minutes working on this picture just to darken things up. And she nailed this one to the roof. I think... I, there's no other criticisms that I could come up with. The All the shadows in the upper areas plus her black were perfect. Um, I might also put a little bit more shadow in uh, Mary. I guess it's Mary looking over her baby. Um, 
I might put a little bit more shadow in there on her bottom half just to make it look more like it's an upward light. Um, under her breasts uh, would still be curved for over her breasts. So you would put a little bit of darkness on the top of her breasts than the underneath because it's an upshadowed picture. Up shadows are fun to do, and I suggest everybody try at least one. Um, it really makes your mind think about where each shadow is, and it's a perfect practice piece that anybody can do. And you can up shadow just about every picture out there. In any coloring book, you have to just use your creative mind and think, well, if the light was coming from the bottom, what would be shadowed on the top? So great job, Deb. I, you're, you always do good art. I shouldn't even say that. She's a fantastic artist. And uh, let's get to the drawing. Okay, guys, are you ready? We got our papers all in here and a cover. I'm actually thinking of drawing this. That's why it's on my desk. <laughs> okay, let's reach in get from the bottom. I got one. I think that's two and three. Okay. You ready? Okay, so we have color it, surprise, and pencils. Okay. Just want one to come out. Okay, one. Let's see, we have number one zero zero eight. I had to write that one in because I didn't have a one zero zero in the Okay, so we have for the color it one zero zero eight. Okay. Okay, we have two more. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. This is for the surprise. And we have one zero three four. One, zero, three, four. And that leaves the pencils for this one. You ready? Two, five, four, one. Two, what is it? Two, two, five, four. Four, one. Okay. We've got our numbers up here. Let's see who won. I have a lot to go through. Okay, so we have one zero zero eight. Zero zero eight one zero zero eight. Okay. Now I can't say I'm disappointed about this. <laughs> Lori Coles. <laughs> Even around for so long, Lori, you won the color it book. Yay! They're in every the all the time commenting. I'm I'm very happy. Okay, let's see the next one. So, Lori, you won.
Okay. Now the surprise is one zero three four. Okay. I don't know who you are. <laughs> One zero three four. We've got restless thoughts. Okay, you want a surprise? Contact me in my email. Okay, and for the we. For the pencils, we've got 2541. I'm restless. Okay. Okay, 2541. Okay, we got Nina writes. Nina, congratulations. In fact, congratulations to all three of our winners. And so just contact me at howtoadultcolor at gmail.com and I will get your prizes out to you. Congratulations to our winners. All you need to do to enter the last drawing is comment below, like, comment, and subscribe. Make a comment below. And this week, let's wish each other a happy holiday. Take care. Bye-bye. Give my life color. You give my life color. 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 You give my life color.